Spirulina because it contains the most oil, yeah. and the um, and also because it's the preferred buchu when you indigest. So for making teas, for using it in the health industry, uh, in capsules and things like that, that yeah. is what we use it for. We the main um, use for buchu oil was um, in the flavor and fragrance industries. Buchu is a flavor enhancer for black currant. Use it can be used in the ice cream industry. It was exported quite extensively. The perfume industry, especially um, um, in France, mm. uh, there are special nodes in the buchu oil. In the last five to seven years, the um, the health industry really picked up. Um, in our group, we have a company called Buchu Life. Um, so the oil that we distill on the farm. We, um, apart from selling it uh, to Europe and um, all over, we, we also sell to them. And then they make, um, they've got tablets that they make um, and also an animal range for animals. The main properties of Buchut lowers your blood sugar levels. It lowers your blood pressure. It's a natural diuretic. Um, uh, it is antibacterial, so it's very good for people suffering with UTI ailments and um, uh, bladder infections. It's a lovely detox, but most of all it's anti-inflammatory. And being anti-inflammatory, it's a wonderful product. People suffering with arthritis and joint pains and hip pains, it's, it's excellent for that. So, um, slowly but surely, the buchu market, the buchu in the medicinal market is picking up. Mm. Um, and we quite, um, we are very passionate about the way we farm with our buchu. Um, that is the oil, the oil side. On the tea side, we we would harvest this and we would dry it just like this, put it in a tea bag, um, and then it's sold in our cartons as um, organic tea. Um, we are fortunate that we can be part of the process from the beginning right until the end. We collect the seeds ourselves, but we, we select a mother block and um, then we, it would flower. Flowers normally, be, uh, it's about August, September, and then we, would, the, we select the bushes with the most seed pots. We cover it with a shade cloth. And during the month of December, the, the pots actually shoot the seeds. We have to cover because it can shoot it very far. So, and then in January, we would harvest those covered bushes, collect the seeds. Then in March, we plant those seeds in seedlings, in seed trays, um, in our nursery. And then um, the months of October, November, December, sometimes even January, we plant it out in the field. What you can see is we, we've got drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is we, um, we use drip because it saves water and also it increases the production of the plant itself. And um, it does not use a lot of water, but if we don't um, irrigate, your production goes down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We do have um, buchu in the mountains, but we don't harvest in the mountains. Lately we, we've got about 20, 25 hectares of buchu that we um, only betulina and that is where we, where we harvest. So mainly the harvest is for oil and then for dry leaf as well. We have recently reached an agreement with the um, sun, you know the koi and the sun. So we've reached an agreement with them whereby we acknowledge the um, the intellectual property, the way that they discovered the oh, they use. Okay. So we've reached an agreement whereby we donate a certain percentage of our um, of our income or our profit on the buchu to them as well. Okay. Um, and we quite um, we're very proud of the fact because we uh, we at this stage we are the only uh, organic buchu farmer that has done that. Um, but even in the buchu industry, I think it's very important. Mm. I think it's very important to give back um, 
they were the ones who discovered the medicinal properties and yes we are just taking it further yeah. so we're saying thank you um, harvest about 50 to 60 tons of, of buffoon per year um, when it comes to the rooibos it's a little bit less than that mm. so we, we're not a huge farm but we, we focus very much on organic um, conservation recycling we um, we have the mountains that you see over there we've donated it's almost 90% of the farm to Cape Nature on a stewardship basis okay. so what that means is we we've committed ourselves to looking after nature looking after the, the mountain yeah. but this is important for us to to be yeah. able to farm in harmony with nature um, and that's what, why we love what we do and we're so passionate about the buchel because this is the next big thing for us. And, and buchel is also a re-sprouter which means that um, if we have a fire um, it'll... it'll um, re-sprout. Re re uh, we are trying here, you will now see that um, this one looks sort of okay but this is dead and there's one that looks okay and these are all dead but remember this will be harvested for the fifth time now which is actually um, not the ordinary right Benny mm. because um, normally one would only harvest robots for about four years and then you would plow it back in cut it off plow it back in but what we ha what we would normally do is you would finish this then plow um, cut everything flat plow it back in then you plant wheat or a similar crop for about four or five years to let your field rest and then you would use it then you would start planting your robots again but what we've decided to try is uh, we planted wheat here for the last four years and last year we then planted this tea so now after harvesting this row next year we will we will um, cut this flat plow this in and plant wheat here for another four or five years from the time we stopped spraying anything um, our production went down quite a bit and, it, and I must admit it's still not as high as the as the conventional farmer definitely not but it's come back because you get your na natural predators that um, that assists us in in keeping it under control attended a research they are been they doing excellent work um, when it comes to um, the research on diabetic people suffering with diabetes and the results that they've done on on the rooibos have actually been very promising so nothing has been published yet but we are very positive you know if you think about all the other health properties of rooibos that by drinking your six cups and six cups of rooibos aren't that many people tend to think you know oh six cups i can't drink six cups but you do you can drink a cup before you leave for work and two cups in the morning and two cups in the afternoon and one in the evening before you go to bed um, it doesn't contain any caffeine so just lovely for you to, before you go to bed to have a nice evening sleep so yes the red regular um, earthworm and you get three kinds one that lives at the bottom mid and you get one at the middle and one at the top the one we use is at the bottom so if, if this is now empty we would now take the top bit of this and put it in at the bottom obviously and then we'll start again we use pig manure for that rock phosphate which is organic and then a bit of this we also use some uh, robot sticks and we use um, the, some of the de-oiled leaf sticks for this doesn't smell like anything no. doesn't smell like anything no pig manure no pigment here at all. Steel distillation pot. That is the bigger one. It takes one and a half um, tons of product, wet product, and this is one ton of wet product. Um, depending on the size, it takes about two to three hours for distillation to finish.